Hello, my chicklets. Thank you for stopping by. Today is day 30 in our AU August series. This one is going to be the God's AU. I don't have much to say, so go ahead and buckle up and strap in and listen to The Unyielding Force of Nature. Roman finished his monologue, making his way backstage. This was the first time he was playing a lead, and he was very excited. The theater's playwright and patron had just created a new play, and he hoped to do the character justice. He was also hoping to impress his boyfriend, who immediately hugged him once he was in the building behind the stage. "'You're amazing!' His boyfriend just about fluttered, wrapping his arms around Roman and pulling him in close. He could tell by the way Patton was clinging to his neck that he wanted a kiss, but now was not the time nor the place. Despite the theater being very full of gay men, the theater was also home to devotees of the god of theater, who had staked his claim on Roman long ago. Patton wasn't normally the rebellious type, but he had seen Roman perform. He shouldn't have even been out of the forest, but it was worth it for this. Everything about Roman was intense in a way that only humans could be. His passion was intense, his work was intense, and his love was the most intense out of all of it. Patton had understood love as an abstract concept. The love for his forest, or the love for his family. But it was nothing like the embers of fire that licked at Patton every time he was with Roman. "'You're too kind,' the actor whispered as he pulled away. "'Shall we head to the forest?' "'Yes.' at least under the cover of his trees, under the cover of his own domain, the other gods were less likely to be able to see how they melded. The two almost ran to the forest's edge, the trees moving to meet them, and once they were under the cover of the canopy, Patton launched himself into Roman's arms, stealing away his lips and breath. This play is going to be a success because of you. Everything you do shows your passion and love for theater. Roman laughed, a low, rumbling laugh, as he wrapped his arms around Patton. My love, I am supposed to be worshipping you, not the other way around. I don't need to be worshipped, as long as you're here with me. There was a soft smile on the actor's lips as he pushed aside Patton's hair. You said something about a picnic? Yes, I did. Patton pulled out a basket, seemingly from thin air. Shall we go find a place to sit? The two made their way to a clearing they had used many times before, Patton spreading out a blanket so that Roman wouldn't get dirty, before pulling out everything from the basket. In the middle of the basket, he put a single fruit. Roman looked at it, confused, gently picking it up. My love, is this a fig? No, silly, it's a date! Roman looked at him, confused, before the smile began to spread in his face, Patton fighting back a giggle. And they call me a wordsmith. Did you like it? Of course. He pulled Patton into his arms, kissing the top of his head gently. Let's eat. The two ate in peace, happily enjoying their time together until the sun began to set. I have to return home, Roman whispered from where he was, curled in Patton's arms. I know, but I don't want to let you go. I know. It was a shared understanding. Neither of them wanted to let go of the other. Eventually, they did. Patton standing up and leading Roman back out of the forest. He waved goodbye, letting the sadness slowly fill his heart. He understood now. A human had once said how wonderful it is to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. And Roman really did make goodbyes hard. He doesn't belong to you, Patton. The voice of one of the other gods echoed in his head, and a shiver ran down his spine. You can't control the humans that easily, Anton. He responded, not bothering to turn to the other, wanting to watch the last glimpses of Roman's back. No, but I can control you. His voice was quiet and smooth, and so assured. Leave him, or I will strip your domain from this area. It would be easier than you think. Patton gasped, a look of betrayal in his eyes as he finally turned to his fellow god in shock and horror. You wouldn't. Wouldn't I? He looked down his circular sunglasses. Your domain is dying by human hand. You don't think I won't speed up the process? Patton bit at his lip. If I leave him, it will break his heart. And he will channel it into his art. You don't win in this situation. It's useless to even try. The earth always has the last claim. When your humans fade, my trees will spread and retake the earth. 
As long as Rohan will have me, I will stay by his side for this brief lifetime. Patton hesitated before, muttering, Take the forests, but know that my anger is a slow but deep fire. Anton rolled his eyes and disappeared. Patton knew that the other god would have his forest burned, but Patton was comfortable playing the long game. One show of strength as he grew a maple tree in the center of town, and one show of patience as he planted maple seeds under the theater. It would take time, but nature would always win, and while he waited, Roman could still perform on the stage he adored so much. No matter what, you will always be under the protection of a god. Patton said, before making his way into town. What better way to spend a few mortal years than in the arms of the human he had stolen? Thank you all for listening. This was The Unyielding Force of Nature, day 30 in our AU August series. I do hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you have a wonderful day.